Hi, my name is Chase Harnett and I'm the founder of The Hudson Oven, a small cottage industry bakery here in the lower Hudson Valley. I wanted to take a moment today to share with you the process of turning a country loaf bread brick into an actual baked and finished loaf of bread. Um, it really doesn't take much time and it doesn't take uh, too much hardware either. Uh, you don't need any really uh, specialty items or anything like that that you would need otherwise in a commercial bakery. Uh, this product is designed to get you off and running and, and having a good first successful bake making bread at home. And let's just get started. All you're going to need is a bowl to mix uh, your flour and your, your bread brick mixture and your water together in. Uh, you're going to need one and a half cups, no more than one and a half cups of water. You can, you can start at about a cup and a quarter and if you think you need a little more water then add some. You can always add more, you can't remove water. And you're going to need another bowl as your proofing bowl, just a standard you know, household uh, bowl with a linen so that way it doesn't stick. Um, now there's two ways to bake it. You can bake it on a sheet pan, which is okay if you don't have um, anything else. But if you do have a cast iron pan, that's going to really give you some nice heat retention and bake uh, and really assist in baking the loaf through from the underside. Um, okay, so let's get started. All we're going to have to do is add our water. This is, like I said, a little bit more than a cup and a quarter, actually, somewhere between a cup and a quarter and a cup and a half. This is the hottest water I could get out of my sink. We're just going to add that right into the bowl. We're going to take our country loaf bread brick, save the packaging because it has all the uh, instructions on the side, and we're just going to tear it open slightly to introduce some air into the bag, and then we're going to neatly, in the bag itself, break up that brick so we have no large clumps when we dump it out. Okay, now that it's all nicely broken up, we're going to open it and dump it right into the water. Now all we're going to do here is just mix it slowly, usually using one hand, I've, I've learned over time, is, is better because inevitably when you start mixing flour and your hands get covered in dough, you develop an itch on the end of your nose and there's no way to itch it. So in this case I'm starting with just my pointer finger to, to mix it around and it's already coming together very nicely. You can see it's a pretty clumpy and shaggy dough we call this, so we're going to keep mixing until it starts to become a little bit more cohesive and smooth. Now I'm going to go in with my full hand and give it some, you know, real, real grabs and grips so that way it starts breaking up those dry clumps and, and introducing it to the water. Then we're swirling around the edge of the bowl using, using the whole uh, dough mass and sort of cleaning up the bowl as we go. Getting all that dry flour incorporated. A couple more turns and grips here and we'll be pretty much set and ready to do our first bulk fermentation rise. We're going to center the dough in the bowl and it's going to undergo its first session of fermentation. Now depending on what your experience level is and how much time you have and what your schedule is like, you can pretty much adjust this process to fit your needs. So what I'm doing here is just shaping it into a nice round bowl and I'm just going to plop it right in the middle of this bowl and there it's going to sit. We're going to cover this with plastic wrap and put it in a warm space or a warm place to ferment. Now, that's if we want to bake it today. In, you know, within two hours we can have this thing baked and, and have a finished loaf. If you really want to experience the depth of flavor that sourdough has to offer, you can do what I just did now, center it in the bowl after fully mixing, cover it in saran wrap, and put it in a refrigerator for up to 72 hours. You can do three days of fermentation in the refrigerator before then the next steps of making this into a loaf of bread. So now I'm going to let it sit and ferment for a little while and rise and double in size, at least 100% in, in volume. And then we're going to revisit it and shape it into our loaf and place it in our bowl and get another secondary fermentation while our oven's heating. And we're going to uh, bake it up and make it into a finished loaf. It can either be a three-hour process or a three-day process. It's up to you. All right, I'll see you when this doubles in size in probably about an hour if it's in a nice warm place. Remember to cover it so that way it doesn't dry out. All right, so here we are about an hour later. As you can see, it's a different bowl. That's because uh, I, I made one ahead of time, so that way we can get this video on the road. Um, so I'm just gonna uncover it. it. Smells amazing. It smells nicely of fermentation. The dough's coming along. You can see some um, air bubbles coming through. And we're just gonna dump this out onto our work surface. So in the case that you're at home and you don't have one of these dough scrapers laying around, Really any flat, a flat edge tool that's in your kitchen could work. Um, even a spatula or a rubber spatula or the back edge of a knife or something that you feel safe uh, working with. Um, but as you can see, all of this gluten structure as it's pouring out 
it's already developed nicely even in that short amount of time so we're going to scrape out the bowl and then we're going to give this dough its initial shaping we're going to set that aside so we're going to take our flat edge tool and we're just going to round it up So right now we're just suggesting to the dough what shape it wants to be. I have a round bowl, so I'm making it into a nice round bowl. All right, so now that that's settled there, we're going to let that sit for another 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to throw the bowl back over top of it so that way it doesn't dry out too much. Uh, but by the time we come back, we're going to be able to flip it over and do a final shaping and then set it into our bowl for uh, another session of fermentation while our oven is heating up. I like to do this on a lightly floured surface, but if you don't have flour in the house, don't be afraid to use actually water. If you put a generous amount of water on the work surface, it keeps the dough from sticking if you move quick enough. All right, so I'm just gonna, this is our top side of the loaf, right? So we're just gonna invert that dough, flip it upside down onto the table, pick up all the remaining dough. Um, and what we're gonna do is make a boule. It's actually the easiest shape to do, so it's just a round shape. We're going to bring our left side over across and our right side back over top of that. We're going to turn it and we're going to do the same thing. So it's basically four corners. Now that we have this nice package of dough, uh, we're going to clear our surface of the flour, place it right side up one more time, and now we're going to do this sort of orbital motion. I'm going to bring you closer and show you um, what I'm talking about. So we have this sort of oblong shape, right? And we actually want to develop as much tension as we can. So. I'm using this process of sort of lifting one half of the dough, similar to what I did with the original uh, pre-shape. Lift one half and utilize the adhesion of the other half to the table to your advantage. So you're dragging it across and then rotating the dough each time you do that so that way you, you get, you're left with a round shape. Now you can overdo this in this stage, so it should only be about five to ten motions um, all in all, so I'm feeling like that has a decent decent amount of tension when you press you can feel firmness inside the dough um, And that should be enough to get us a nice oven spring once we bake the loaf All right, so what I'm going to do is take our bowl one more once again I'm going to line that bowl with a with a towel And I'm going to transfer I'm going to line that bowl with a towel Dust it lightly with, lightly with flour. If you don't have flour, don't worry. This is just a precautionary measure. And we're going to turn it once again back upside down. So we're going to invert the dough in the bowl. Okay, so now that the bread brick has undergone its final shaping, we're going to just gently wrap it up and start preheating our oven with the cast iron skillet or sheet pan inside it. We're also going to place another additional sheet pan in the bottom of the oven, either on the bottom itself or on the bottom rack below where you're going to be baking your dough. I'll show you what that's for in a little while. All right, let's go get this preheated and let's put this nearby the oven so that way it gets a little bit of a boost of fermentation. Welcome to my kitchen. So even though the oven's preheated, the cast iron really hasn't had time to absorb all 400 degrees that we wanted it to. So I'm gonna pull it out and actually start up one of my burners and put it on there while I execute the next couple steps of this baking process. If you happen to have a little bit of flour lying around, it doesn't hurt to just dust the surface of your cast iron skillet just a little bit to keep it from sticking. Although if it is hot enough, it shouldn't have any problem uh, coming away once it's finished baking. All right, so now all we're gonna do is unwrap our loaf of bread that we just final shaped not too long ago. As you can see, it's sort of relaxed and um, increased in size by about 20 or 30 percent. So as you can see when I push it with my finger it has a little bit of a spring back. The indents are still there slightly but it is bouncing back at us so that means it's not overproofed and it's not underproofed. So we're just going to dump it out into our really hot cast iron skillet so careful. I'm going to try to center it that wasn't too perfect but it's going to work just fine. And all we're going to do is take, I, in this case I have something called alarm. Um, but you can use uh, any old razor blade if you have one in the garage or, or um, you know, in a, in a sewing kit or something like that. But even if you don't have a razor blade, you can just use a pair of scissors and just snip a, a, few, um, a few spots across the top of the dough. And you're just creating or giving it a place to expand and open up um, as it heats. 
um, but it's nice to have a razor blade and you can do little, uh, little designs on it. I just like to do a standard sort of like hashtag type thing. Just go across the top and really give it a lot of uh, a lot of suggestions as to where it should open up when it, once it starts baking fully. All right, so now that I've scored the loaf, I'm going to transfer it back into the oven. Put it towards the back there, and as you can see, I have a sheet pan on the bottom shelf. So in that sheet pan on the bottom, I'm actually going to pour about a half a cup of water. Uh, now, careful doing this because the steam can be really hot, um, but just, you know, quickly do it. Don't be afraid, pour it in and, and close it up and leave the oven on around 470. I like to really start at a very high temperature and in about 15 minutes I'm going to turn it down um, and let it finish baking for a little while longer. Okay, so we started at 470 degrees and it spent about 20 minutes in the oven. Then I reduced the temperature to 405 and it's been about 20 minutes since then. Okay, so here we are about 40 minutes later total and I'm going to pull the first loaf out of the oven. Just gonna get a sound check here. Sounds done to me. I'm just gonna do a little crumb reveal and see what it looks like. Of course, you know, over time, you're gonna get better at this and start feeling the actual tension of the gluten that you're developing, um, and you can get a taller, better loaf. Um, but this is a great way to start baking, and hopefully this gives you a taste of what, uh, what making bread in your own house uh, really feels like and tastes like. All right, I hope that your experience at home was as fun as, as mine was here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed turning your country loaf brick into a nice loaf of bread for your family to enjoy or even just yourself. I won't tell anyone if you eat the whole thing. This is Chase Harnett with the Hudson Oven signing off. I'll see you next time. Cheers.